So I am just going to say welcome to you all um, to this. Uh, this is so exciting. We're so excited about this, this, this very first meeting of the Learning Disability Research Group. Um, I'm Irene Tafriwene. I'm a professor at the faculty. Um, I've been uh, around at the university for many, many years, um, but we've never had in this faculty at Kingston and St George's a learning disability research group. So it's really exciting. And today is really about um, saying hello to each other, everybody who's interested in research around learning disability, um, and just sort of telling each other what we're interested in and how exciting research is, what our hopes and our dreams are. There's lots of us in this meeting, so that's too many for all of us to be able to say something, right? So I'm going to ask you if you want to introduce yourself or um, say something about the things that I'm talking about in this meeting, if you could write it in the chat, okay, and then, and then everybody can see it. That would be really help. That would be really good. Um, but what we're going to do um, today is we're going to introduce ourselves and then we're going to talk about this group and research with our colours, which I've got here. Look, I've got yellow, blue, green and red. So I hope you've got your colours ready because you'll be asked to show them to us in a minute. Richard, do you want to introduce yourself? Hello, my Hello everyone, my name is Richard Keegan Gore. I am a research assistant at Kingston University, Kingston St George's University. I'm quite new at the job and we are very excited to welcome everybody here to our launch meeting of the new learning disability research group. We're going to use how to talk about research. Here's a welcome video we're going to start with the colour blue. Okay, thanks Richard. Um, blue is the colour of our foundations. You will hear people talk about blue, um, but as I say, you can also write in the chat box your ideas, your the foundations that you are building on. But let's, let's just um, look at the, our blue things first. have to be friendly don't they and sort of mm. easy uh, yes. for everyone yes they do have to be if, if, if they can't talk, talk in a high level got to talk, talk in a medium level you know everybody understand I used to wipe my glasses. Oh, it, so, yeah, nice. yeah. Teaching other people about research. Um, all the, the research, the important research that I did was always with people with learning disabilities. And it usually ended up with a picture book, which explained what we'd found out. I was doing a PhD, um, which was looking at how doctors and nurses communicate with the families of people who are near the end of their lives. I'm building on 25 years of working with children with special needs. I've previously done bits of 
research um, thinking about nutrition and how we can improve nutrition in people with learning disabilities. A long time ago, um, I did some research with a team of people. I've also been on the advisory group, giving advice. The training, learning about research and getting a certificate. I've done the research course at St George's Hospital with with Bernie and with Dan. The research course and also the promenades with Ross Roots. I am building on having spent a whole decade living and working with people with learning disabilities and then a decade working in the hospice and then two decades doing research around end of life care and learning disability. Be, be, being the first chair of the National Speaking Group for last, the organisation supports me, yes. And being co-chair of the Assembly for People Who Are Difficulties in Lambeth. Building on strong foundations of inclusion at MENCAP. So I did a piece of research for St George's Hospital called Our Health Our Say. Blue category is about solid foundations, and for me, that's always been about inclusive methodologies. Doing research together is you and I have worked together um, on the um, psychological and cognitive uh, research group. Uh, we've also collaborated with work in the Centre for Public Engagement, which your new group is now building on. So I have a uh, a son who has a learning disability. Um, so I come at it from the point of view as a, of a mum um, and also as a, as a learning disability nurse. So I've got my wobble mat and this reminds me that um, the foundations, the things I've learned, they're not always um, solid, that we have to think about um, what we've learned and what's true and what's not true. I found a birthday party tablecloth. I know that you're building on a great group of people. Every year you're going to have great projects which you're going to be developing as a team at the faculty. We'll have some great celebrations of those projects. And blue is the best colour in the world, my favourite. Right, there we are everyone. So, if you put yourself on gallery view, if you know how to do that, then I'm I, going to I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it, Arini. No, oh, don't, don't worry, because it will work even without. Um, if you can, can I invite everybody now to, to hold up their blue thing? Right? I want the entire screen to turn blue so that we can all see what it is to me, what we are building on. Um, Hold it up for a minute, okay, because we're going to do some lovely screenshots. Amazing. Blue, I can see mugs and books and all manner of bubble mats. Uh, excellent. Becky, are you doing a lovely screenshot there? Yeah, there's just three pages of people to get, so just oh. uh, <laughs> keep holding for now. Oh, goodness, yes, I can sew like that. Oh, birthday cards, Ooh, calendars. And whilst you're holding that up, as I say, I haven't got time to go around all of you to say what your green, your blue things are, but write it in the chat, yeah? Say what it is that you're building on. Um, all right, done, Becky. Uh, one more second, just get the third screen. <laughs> okay, you're good, I think. Excellent. Great. Now, Richard, then, do you wish you want to invite our first um, speaker, Richard? Let me go back, go back on speaker view. We would, like, we would like to now invite Professor Sheila Harris to say a few blue words. Sheila is the Associate Dean here. Oh, thank you very much, Richard. That was a lovely introduction. And it was Great to hear people so excited to see people on the film, which we've just been watching. So, and um, my name's Scylla. I'm, my job title is called Associate Dean Research. And basically I try and help everybody in our faculty, our faculties, all the people who work together uh, to do their research. So I meet people like Irena to talk to her about her work and to, 
think of any help I can give her. And if she has a problem with something, we put our heads together and try and solve the problems so she can do great research. And um, so why do we do research in our faculty? Well, we have quite a few different topics we do research on. One is um, like Mary's group does research on mental health. Tom's group looks after people, for example, who might have problems with their hearts. And um, Kirsty and Demetra, they tend to do research about people's well-being because sometimes we just have to try and stay healthy. It's not always that we're ill. Sometimes we're just looking after ourselves and staying well. And um, people like Anne Ooms, who helps us understand how we should teach people so that they can be really great at their jobs when they go and work in our health and social care services. So we do lots of different types of research. And if we do research, then we know, uh, it helps us know what works and also what doesn't work. So if we find a new or better way of helping people, then we can share that and help everyone to keep healthier and look after each other. And my brother has autism, so um, he finds life quite difficult. And every day we have a talk on the phone, either with me or my sister, and we try and help him think of solutions. It was Richard who used the word solutions on the film. And solutions are really good to work on together. So in your group, which I think is the yellow tulip group, um, you're all helping people think about learning disabilities, and how together you can think of good ways to provide solutions and do research together. So thank you for your brilliant research group and congratulations on starting your group today. Uh, thank you, Silla. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We would like to now invite Baroness Silla Hollings to tell us about Blue. Seriously, it is a honorary professor of the university, but before that she has been at St. George's University for a long time, for, for a long time, for, for longer than any of us, yes. Yeah, uh, thank you, Richard. And let me also give a word of introduction to, um, to Sheila Hollins, um, because Sheila, you and I, um, I think you, you were there when I first started at St. George's University, more that's been out 20 years ago. Um, and I'm delighted that you've just joined our faculty as an honorary professor, but you were the pioneer in this. So I thought it'd be really nice to hear a bit about your very early, your earlier days at St. George's and the work you did there involving people with learning disabilities. And hi, Nigel, lovely to see you as well. You are a huge yeah. foundation of the work we're building on. <laughs> I saw you in Lars, mm. and Lars Lambeth. Yes. So, so Ni Nigel is really my foundation because um, it was when I started working at St. George's in the early 1980s and I started working in a long stay hospital called St. Ebers. And there was a man there who um, who's really stopped eating and stopped wanting to do anything. And when I asked more questions, it turned out that his father had died and nobody had noticed or understood. And because he didn't have any words, um, it didn't seem to them that his father stopping visiting was really going to matter that much. So I created uh, my first book in pictures called When Dad Died. And um, this story really came about with Nigel's help because when Nigel was younger, we always used to draw pictures for him when <laughs> to go on an adventure holiday or something and words weren't really very useful and so pictures really helped him to understand and I thought well why not use the same method the same way and so Nigel helped with a friend who was an artist to come up with a story that we could all understand and that was the first now there are 60 books but along the way what that did then was to stimulate me to do research and so the first book was published in 1989. And then in 1992, I went to America and I explored how some people with learning disabilities were helping um, with a research project. And when I came back, I employed two people. Some of you will know them, Jackie Downer and Wendy Perez. 
and they both came to St George's in 1992 and they stayed for 10 years as uh, teaching assistants and co-researchers essentially. And from then on, every time we did some research, we always tried to publish um, something about what we'd found out in the pictures. So this, if you like, they're research publications, I would say they are, but they're trying to tell a story about what is going to provide, if you like, a solution, uh, Richard, um, the issue that people are facing. So whether it was moving out of a long stay hospital and creating a new life in the community. The book, Peter's New Home, or A New Home in the Community, was really based on what we were discovering was best practice. And so they look very simple, uh, but actually uh, they're really fundamental. And what I want to do in research now is, um, we've done some research around health, like we found that uh, people with epilepsy who use our book about epilepsy have better outcomes than people who don't, because they understand more about why they need to take this. We've done the same with um, testicular cancer, and we've done the same with several other of our books. But we want to do more research, and the research project we're trying to get money for at the moment, um, which I hope Kingston will help with uh, if we get the money, is. Um, to think about how to make a uh, picture um, mean that more people with learning disabilities will be able to have their annual health check and their annual vaccinations, which is probably mm. going to include flu and COVID now. So we're hoping that we can get the money to do that project. And it will definitely be a project that needs to be done right alongside and with people with learning disabilities. So. Uh, to me, the foundation is working together. Thank you very much. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank, thank you, Celia. And, and now we want to welcome Amanda Cresswell. Amanda has been Irina's co-researcher for many years. Thank you. And Amanda, I was just listening to Sheila, and, and she that, that really was our foundation, isn't it? Because you... Um, I came to St George's University 20 years ago, and it's amazing, Sheila, that you've been employing people with a learning disability at, at this university for, for 30 years. That's extraordinary. Um, you were one of those. We employed you, didn't Amanda? So as, as to be our, our co-researcher, do you want to say a little bit about the things we've done um, when we're still working at St George's? You know, um, university? Uh, before I started working with you, I was working with Sheila to teach the student doctors how to communicate with people with learning disabilities. Yeah, exactly. And we've done a lot of work around communicating, don't we, and telling people what's the best way and how important it is to talk together about difficult things. Yeah. Do you want to say somewhat something about all the, um, the research we've done and the trips we've been on to tell people about this? Well, every time that Irena and I have gone away on a trip, people are so amazed that a person with a learning disability can do research and get up and talk in front of lots of people. If Irena was doing it by herself, it doesn't work. But when we work as a team, it, it always works. Yeah. I think that's exactly right, Amanda. And I think you've, I don't really need to, we don't really need to say anymore because you're right. Whenever we give a talk together, um, you get 10 out of 10 when people score it. And I, I might get an eight or a nine, but I never get a 10. Um, and it's, it's, it, people remember it and they? they remember what you say. Um, and that's why I'm just, it's just so important to us that, that, that you're around and that Richard, that you're here as a, as a researcher as well. Um, so, so that's great. And at the moment, you're sort of connected with us as an advisor, almost, aren't you, Amanda? You're still. Yeah. Um, and do you want to say something about the BBC News that you've been on? Because I think yeah. Richard mentioned something about that as well. <laughs> well, I've been wanting to be on the on the BBC for a long time, and then Irena wrote to Nikki Fox 
to see if we could do a story. And then, and then my dream came true for actually going on the news and telling people what it's like for someone with a learning disability not to have the vaccine and getting very ill and maybe dying, which is not good. Yeah, exactly. And I think, again, that was building on all the work we've done, isn't it, Amanda? That's, you know, going on to the BBC News to tell about important things is not in itself research, but it's important because it's, it's telling people about what you know um, that matters. Yeah. So thank you really very much, Amanda. Um, I think we can, we're going to move on now because we have, we've got the next colour to think about. Do you want to say something about that, Richard? We're celebrities now, aren't we? Because we've been on the BBC News. Thank you, Amanda. Now we're going to think about the colour red we are, yes. Okay, and red is all about um, just things that we love. Look, I'm wearing red, it's very good, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I can yeah. Thank you, Ella. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ella. Is it red? We both got red. What I love about research is hearing about all the new ideas for projects that people think up. And I know this Learning Disability Research Group will have some brilliant ideas. I'm doing research training um, with a great group of research students with learning disabilities. Um, so I found that really fun. What I love most is empowering people um, with learning disabilities themselves. The notion of belonging, actually being really part of. As Dean of the faculty, the thing that I really enjoy the most is um, meeting new people and working with lots of interesting people. I enjoy uh, doing presentation and telling people about research. Doing like great presentations on the, about researching working together with people with learning disabilities and other experts by experience. What I really love about research is that you can really take the time to listen to people and to hear their stories. It's a huge privilege. I love it. What I like about research is being able to talk to people and find out about things and, and get to meet people and hopefully making solutions and all that, yes. Uh, my passion um, is mental health nursing and in particular how registered mental health nurses interact with uh, service users. My passion is communication and how children and individuals with severe and profound disabilities communicate. I think research is fun. It is fun, it is fun Harriet. It can be fun sometimes and I, I also like the feeling of doing some important research that could, that, that can make a difference. Speaking to lots of different people who might be a bit different to me, um, and that, that means they can teach me something new about the world. The stuff that I enjoy is around learning more about different methods to communicate and how we can use those within research. I really love about research that I get to meet lots of different people and help them to help other people with learning disabilities. I like giving training and that on the REACH standard and um, the L LDE. Yeah. That's what I've been enjoying doing. I'm teaching student nurses um, and what I'm really enjoying doing is teaching them about working with people with learning disabilities. To work closely with somebody and create a space where they feel kind of relaxed and valued um, and they talk to you and tell you stories about their life and their experience. I, I just like buying things. Right, folks, what do we love about research? I would really look forward to seeing what you're going to type into the chat box. But first of all, it's time for all of you to um, go into your gallery view if you can and hold up your red things and think about 
what you love and like about research because quite often and i don't know if there's any student nurses here or people who haven't done any research yet um but i hope you get the message here that research is fun and it can be a really a lovely and nice thing to do um so i'm going to take oh, becca you've got your red face mask that's very organized it keeps your hands free <laughs> um she's going to take the screenshots um and of course now that you're holding it up you can't actually type in the chat box but you can do that afterwards um so just hold that out for a minute and just look at all these people who love research there we go oh, i can see vases and the purse books maps apple glass cases pens there we go excellent well done everyone and richard you and i are simply i just going to talk a little bit about um about what we think is, is is nice about research isn't it what what do you well, I think what's nice about research is, like I said a bit earlier, for it to get to know people and to find that information that um, yeah, helping to um, make solutions to we can make things better for people. It was interesting, isn't it, Richard? How many people on that film said, I really like meeting people and talking to people and listening to people? That was one thing. And the other thing was people talked about making a difference and 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 doing research that is going to help people um but you've you know i've done research for about 20 years now and you've done research now for about two months <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes that's it yes and but um well for hope you so you have been doing lots of practicing of how to do interviews for people we have, so I think we nearly got it ready for we can go out to interview people. So hopefully we'll be doing that soon, yes. Yeah. Because I'm going to be interviewing people with learning difficulties. So I am in fact um that you and Becky are going to be interviewing the families, yes, in fact. Um so hopefully for, but hopefully that we can make better solutions and help people to to work things out. But uh, so far it's going okay it is yes yeah i think you're doing a great job richard and i think you're right it's the interviewing people and listening to people is just such a privilege and several people have said that on the film because you really can take time to sit and well you need to take time to sit and listen to what they have to say um so that's that's that that's wonderful so it, it's it's and it's nice to see um what everybody else loves about research as well but the next thing we're going to then think about um is New, is, is new things we're going to think about green um and and green is uh, well richard you're quite great you're quite green because you're quite new um but there's lots of other things that are that are new so let's just see what people have to say about that I think we can talk about this together, Richard, because we started this new group, aren't we? That's the new. Yeah, yes, yes. Um, yeah, that's exciting, that is, yes. I'm looking forward to it, I am, yes. I'm looking forward to the Learning Disability Research Group, and yeah, and I hope that it um, we can do well with it and it goes a long way. Uh, my new green and very exciting green shoots is definitely uh, beginning my PhD. Something that I've just started is my new job at MenCap. It's currently my fourth week. It's going really good so far. Mo will help us and make sure that MenCap's research is inclusive. We are just starting some work about um, placements for learning disability student nurses. This is vitamins, vitamins and energy. So it's fantastic seeing the new group launching with everybody's enthusiasm and 
Uh, look after yourselves. Take great care of yourselves. I'm taking on the, the exam and assessment tutor role at the university. And I'm, I'm excited about that to see how we might be able to in, have more experts by experience involved in assessment quality. I am new to the MENCAT team. I was happy and that when I started um, my other new co-chair job, for a person that lived with a lived experience with a learning disability on a board. So I joined um, Kingston St George's uh, in November last year, yet to meet people actually in person. So I'm looking forward to getting back in the office at some point. I'm going to pour from my green jug here, lots of clever ideas into the research group. Yesterday, I just had an interview for for a job and I was very lucky because I was successful and I got the job. Yeah, very Ooh. exciting. I will be launching a, a mental health research group, which is very much a partnership between a mental health service users, academics and clinicians. And that will be happening um, in April, most likely the 14th or perhaps the week after. I went on the, the BBC news to help other people get get the vaccine. Will you stay part of this group, Lynette? Yes, I hope so. Um, and I think it'd be really good to collaborate across different universities. So many new things. Um, <laughs> This, this, this hat is um, it's a dressing up box that I've raided here. <laughs> this explains things. So, yes, everybody, hold up your green things. Well done. So, oh, the nice chocolate there, Richard. Um, hold up your green things, and then we can think about <clears throat> and think about all the sort of new things that you're starting or would like to start, or the, the, the different new things that are happening in your world, whether it's do research search or not. And we're just gonna take a time to admire everybody's shopping bags and green bottles and pencils and books and vases and such like. It was interesting, we found that, that for most people when we were filming this, green was the hardest thing to, f to find in people's rooms. Quite a lot of plants had to be got from the downstairs room. Uh, there we go. You done that, Becky? Yeah? Excellent. Okay. In that case, I'm going to invite the next um, speaker, which actually a really huge welcome. It's Jo, Jo Giles. You saw her briefly on the, on, on the film. And I have to say, you can't really be any newer than Jo, because this is literally Jo's first hour in the job. We've just appointed you as our newest faculty member. Um, so Joe, just to, uh, very welcome. And do you want to say a little bit about what your new job is with us? Hello, everyone. Really lovely to see you all. Um, yeah, so my, my new job is to uh, support Richard in his role as research assistant. And um, so part of that, that will be maybe in two ways. So some of that will be helping Richard with practical things like interviews and maybe sorting through the information that we find, things that people tell us. And, um, and then also I'll be supporting Richard with sort of any emotional stuff as well. So it's kind of practical and emotional support as well as I think, um, sort of being part of the, the research team um, as a research assistant myself. So, yeah. Right. Thanks, Joe. And I could have also asked you, Joe, to be part of our blue thing because you have been um, a founder member, helped me start a grassroots group, haven't you, with people with learning disabilities that we talk to every month. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yes, we talk about um, death and loss. Uh, and it's sort of moved from a group where there were sort of found. I've frozen there, but um, there we go. We, 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 we go back a bit, but thank you very much. Um, Richard, do you want to invite the next um, speaker? Thank you, Joe. I'm happy that you are starting work with us today. Now we would like to invite Sarah Hatton to talk, to, to talk about green. Sarah is a PhD 
student at the university. Yes, thanks. Um, and Sarah, just you're going to tell us a little, little bit about your PhD, which you've just started this year, haven't you? Hi, everyone. It's really nice to meet you all. Um, I'm looking forward to the day when some of it will be in person as well. Um, my research, which I've started this year, is looking at how uh, children in particular who have got severe or profound learning disabilities, how they can communicate and talk about grief if they haven't got um, the verbal communication skills to do that. So how do we talk about grief when words aren't our, our best friend? Uh, excellent. And what's it like to be... Um a PhD student having worked in, I think you, you worked in children's schools, special needs schools before that. It's That's quite a right. change. It's a massive change, it really is. I always said that the 20, 25 years that I worked in special schools, as much as I hope I taught the children a lot, they certainly taught me even more than I think I ever taught them. Um, so it's lovely to now be thinking about ways that I can better help teachers in the future to support their bereaved and grieving children who are in special schools. So yeah, exciting times. Good, you're very welcome. And it's always wonderful to have PhD students because um, they bring sort of enthusiasm to the faculty. So anybody out there thinking of doing a PhD in, an, in a field related to learning disability, tell us about it and we might be able to help you. And Sarah can give you some top tips then on, on, on on PhD students. Thank you, Sarah. Right, Richard, shall we invite the next speakers then? Thank you, Sarah. Now we would like to invite some of the people from Mencap to say a few words. Yes. Thank you. And the reason we're inviting from Mencap, so it's Harriet, I think, is going to, if, if, if she's here. Um, so Mencap um, has, has a research team uh, at Daphne and yeah. We thought we'd link up. This isn't you. I'm asking you for about green and new things because we haven't really worked together and linked up with Mancap before. But I know that some of your um, employees have done our research training at the faculty. So just yeah, tell us a little bit about Mancap and what's yeah. happening there. Yeah, sure. Um, so hi everyone. I'm Harriet. I've just realised I'm wearing green. That was unintentional, but let's just say it was planned. Um, so I'm a research officer at Mencap. I've been at Mencap for two and a half years now. And yeah, we're collaborating with St George's on this group. We're really excited about being a part of it. And it's really great to hear about everyone's research that they're doing on the chat. I think this group is going to be so valuable just to share all of our learnings and just talk about what we're doing. Um, there's also some other members of the research team on this call today as well. Um, and we also have um, for the first time, um, a person with a learning disability working in the team. So um, Mo Hakim is our new research and impact assistant, uh, which is really exciting. Um, he's in his fifth week now. So big welcome to Mo. Um, and we also, I also um, help facilitate a group called Research Champions, um, which is a group of about 15 colleagues with a learning disability at MENCAP. And we meet once a month to learn about all things research. Um, and the research champions also get involved in research projects as well, whether that's advising on research or, or taking part in the research itself. So we're really keen um, to try and make sure that research is at MENCAP is as inclusive as possible and to make sure we're co-producing all of our research. So we do have quite a few research champions um, here today and some of the research champions have also um, taken part in the St George's um, Learning Disability How to Be a Researcher course which yeah was great and that's how I met Arena. <laughs> okay thank you Harriet and Mo it's lovely to see you in this call and all the other people and and we're actually quite excited aren't we Richard that 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 those that, that you're all going to come and um and come to some of our meetings you know that yes. would really help to um to make sure that all our research is relevant and inclusive. And you've always, what I have to say, what, what impressed me about the people on the research course was your wonderful ideas and how excited and how good your ideas and your questions are. So that's really exciting. Thank you. Right, so shall we then move on to yellow now, um, Richard? Now we're going to talk about yellow. Yellow is our hopes and dreams. And fit. we've got, got a video now, yes. We've got a video, and at the end of the video, we thought we'd give this group um, 
a slightly less sort of long and 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 difficult name and learning disability research group doesn't roll off the tongue quite so easily so at the end of this video we should be, you'll see the um the new name that we've got Oh, I love it, rubber glove. That glove, Richard, has been on and off <laughs> so, so many times. Um, my real aspiration is, as we have special schools and schools across the UK that are teaching schools, I want there to be uh, a change so that there are also research schools as well. For people with learning disabilities uh, to be researchers, um, because if we can if we can do it, then I'm sure other people with learning disabilities can also be researchers as well. And we need more people with a learning disability to become more researchers. My biggest hope is that we find a new way of living together, um, which really does treat everybody as equal, but also recognises the pain and the hurts that people feel and recognises everybody's dreams and hopes and, and validates them. I would like to see people with learning disabilities like uh be be treated more equally and that one day we can use research to help make the world more accessible for people with learning disabilities my dream research would be to to talk to people about um with a learning disability about what's good for them what's bad for them and what we could improve for people yes I think I'd like to um, continue to do research and uh, continue to teach. Really. <laughs> Hopefully we can tell other organisations and other people across the country that people with learning disability can be researchers. My dream is to have a whole team of people with learning disabilities working in our office on research that really matters to us. I would really like the research that I'm doing now to um, take that work even further internationally than it currently is. How we develop practice so that we're better able to reduce un unnecessary admissions to hospital for people with learning disabilities. The thing that sort of links together everything I've been doing is, is communication and so trying to help improve communication in healthcare and being quite new to learning disabilities I think this is an area that really does need a lot of work so I'd love to do some more work in communication. I would really like to work more with with Richard and with other people, um, thinking about how we get people with learning disabilities involved in, in the research that we do. Yellow, I've got my cycling top for when I can cycle back into the university to see you and everybody. My hope and dream to see each other again. I would like to meet up with you and Joe <laughs> face to face as we used to, give you a nice big hug go out for the whole day as a whole group or something, go to the seaside or something, just do normal things instead of being shut indoors all the time. The Learning Disability Research Group outing to the seaside. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm yellow, my hopes and dreams um, are that uh, you uh, continue to flourish and flower and bring great ideas to the world that will change lives and make the world a better place. Right, everyone, here we are. I've got my tulips, it's the yellow tulip group, and um, I'll tell you about that in a minute, but first of all, let's just look at everybody's yellow things. Um, I'm sure we've all got hopes, hopes and dreams. Let's see if there's any other yellow, <laughs> one more yellow. <laughs> Pens, there's flowers. Yeah. Yellow burning, your yellow biscuit is very interesting. <laughs> I've seen that one on the film. Oh, and Amy's even written hope on her yellow little thing, which is very organised.
there you go. Let's see what else I can see. Bananas, there's always a few bananas, rulers, tennis balls, birthday cards. Okay, excellent. So the yellow tulip rib. So I'm just going to finish by um, explaining a little bit um, about that, which is, and, and I know that Richard, you've got yellow daffodils because you haven't got that tulips in your house, but that's also fine. Yeah. Um, we just thought because we've started off with these colors, you know, it's the color of hope um, and dreams and aspirations. Tulips, they are for, you know, new growths and, and growth and buds, friendship, planting things. So for me, I'm just going to sort of talk a little bit about my hopes and dreams. I have for many years just thought, wouldn't it be good to just meet together regularly um, and, and talk about the things that are hard but about the research we do, learn from each other, share our ideas, however new they are it doesn't matter whether you've done research for decades or whether you're new to it you know we're always learning and sometimes people think that we know all the answers that we know it all but we don't you know I, I really don't know a lot about how to do research together so that's that's my dream really that we can really um, become a center where we can share ideas and develop um, learning disability research that includes people. Mm. Um, so for our final speaker, um, I'm going to ask Adine Andy Kent um, to, to, say if, uh, to, well, to say a few words and not just about yellow, but about all the colors. Um, and Andy, we've already um, given people a bit of a preview about this, but um, I wonder whether you can just uh, sort of talk us through all these colours again and, and round up this meeting. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, Richard, I really, I'm really uh, grateful to you for inviting me to say a few words uh, to your new research group. Um, for those of you wondering what a dean does, um, a dean's most important job is to make sure that everyone is looked after when they're working in the faculty and, and for the two universities. Um, and um, for my blue, I had a wobble board. I had an accident and had to learn how to balance again. And it's there to remind me that foundations sometimes need, can be wobbly and you need to build on the, the best research. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking my vase is going to fall over, but I've practiced this a lot. So the vase, my red vase, is, is your new research group. And um, into that, we're going to pour all the wonderful people and ideas that uh, are going to go into it. And um, my yellow was a daffodil like Richard's, um, but um, when Irene told me the lovely new name, um, I, I thought I would get a tulip. So I, I went out early in the morning to, to cut a tulip out of um, the garden, but my wife caught me and said that I couldn't kill a flower. So behind me, uh, I brought them in the big pot. It, it was very heavy. Um, I've got some tulips. Um, but I said, it's a very, very, very special meeting, very special. And she said, well, what, what meeting is it? And I said, it's uh, the newest research group in the faculty. Um, and so she was very kind to me. She went to the garden centre and bought this lovely tulip here. And uh, it's an artificial tulip, I'm afraid. But the good news is that no flowers were harmed in the filming of this video. Um, and so this tulip is you and the ideas that are going to come out of this research group. Um, and um, I did say to uh, Richard and Irene that the most important thing a dean does is to look after people. And because we can't meet in person, um, when you have your uh, first meeting in person, I will send you a birthday cake. So here's the plant food um, that's going to go in. Um, because all research, in my experience, is done better with a slice of cake. Um, and so I'm very pleased to uh, say a few words and welcome you all to this new research group and we'll look after you um, while you're working here at Kingston and St George's um, and can I just say hello to my old friend Sheila Hollins and Nigel who I last saw at the House of Lords Sheila was a big inspiration to me when I started out in research so it's lovely to see you here today Sheila and hello Nigel Thank you so much. What kind of words and, um, well, I mean, what can I say about your flower, um, <laughs> Andy? Um, actually, in a way, it's quite good you got an artificial one because these mines are wooden. I found these. I had these for years sitting around, and it means that um, they will even be there to have a, to, as a mascot for our group in the middle of winter when it's not a tulip season. So I think that's the, that's the end um, of our meeting. Um, I'm just um, 
just looking at the chat and see if this, we've got a few minutes left. Is there anybody else that wants to speak and wants to raise their hand? And I can see that Lloyd, that you're one of those. Do you want to just say hello and introduce yourself? Hi, um, hi everyone. I think I think all of you know know me. Um, I know uh, I know Harriet. I know um, Bernie. Thank you very, very much for letting me join your research group today, and I'm willing to join it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you, Lloyd. It's lovely to see you here at, at this meeting and so many of your colleagues and friends as well. Um, is there anybody else who wants to say, I okay, think, Michael, you've got your hands up. I can't see everybody on the screen. Michael Adams, can you unmute yourself? I don't think we've met Michael. I'm not sure we've... Um... Oh, yeah. Ooh, my no, you haven't met me. It's the first time for me. I oh, am right. with Mel. I am doing the G GM Gold course with Mel oh, over the 50s course. Yeah. And plus, I started a learning disabilities course, um, people's first up in Tameside in 1997, and it's still going. And it's a lot of work. And I am the link ambassador at Tameside Hospital for people with learning disabilities. But it's a lot of uh, now I'm finished on link ambassador work. Now I'm doing nothing now. I'm just talking to you a lot to see how you all are first time. Oh, you're very welcome, Michael. And how lovely to see people in this group who haven't really been, um, you know, at, at, to anything in our university before. But you've clearly been doing lots of important work in the past. And it's, um, yeah, I've been, it's I've, been, I've been going out doing disability le le learning disabilities to colleges, universities, did one last year at Manchester University and I did over 700 people and I had to do a talk on it. Oh. And I had well, to do my life story as well. Well, in that case, I'm going to keep you in mind then, Michael, because I was going to also tell you all about the meetings that we're planning to have. It won't all be as exciting and, and well organized and well prepared um, as this. <laughs> that, that film that took, that, took, that, took, that took me days to prepare, but that's because I was learning how to use the filmmaking yeah. software. If you want to get me an email off Mel, you can. <laughs> I will do. Yes, we'll get your we've got your contact details. So we're going to meet like this um, on Zoom every last Tuesday of the month. Now today is the last Tuesday of the month, isn't it? It's it's March, and it's going to be at twelve o'clock for one hour every mm -hmm. month. Okay, and every month we're going to have a, a, a topic. So the next meeting, the first meeting is going to be on the 27th of April at 12 o'clock. And in that meeting, we're going to think about research training and how we can, how we can, how people with learning disabilities can learn how to do research. Um, okay. So we'll just hear experiences and, and, you know, anybody is welcome to come and join that meeting. Um, the, I'm quite the, happy to join every Tuesday, Harry, um, um, Irena. That would be lovely. It'd be really helpful because you've been to our research training, haven't you? So we can, yes, we can think a little bit about that. what is good about it, what works, what doesn't yes. work. So that's, it's just to um, share experiences like that. Yes, I will. Thank Excellent. You. Thank you. And the 25th of May, the topic then is going to be how to use, how you can use pictures as a research data collection tool. So how can you use pictures to help people with learning disabilities participate? In research and take part in research mm -hmm. um, and Sheila I know that you're going to say to say something then and we've also got experiences with talking mats so these are the first two topics so um, we'll just send out you know um, information about that and you can just join it'll be on zoom because it's easier for most people um, it also means sometimes things go wrong like we freeze and we lose the internet connection and um, but we'll, we'll do our best and see how it goes once we can start meeting again in person um, we don't quite have a plan for that yet. I can't quite imagine it did so long ago. So we'll, we'll see what happens then. But for the moment, it's nice to meet on Zoom because it also means that people like you, Michael, and people who are further away can join us. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. which is lovely. So thank you very much, Richard. Do you want to say the final thank you? Um, thank you, every, thank you, everyone, for for coming on along, and we hope to see you at. Our, at our meetings, we'll meet on Zoom every last Tuesday of the month at 12 o'clock, 12 until 1, yes. Okay, good. Thank you very much. That's the end of our meeting.
Bye bye. Thank you. Thank bye. you. See you again. Bye. I mean, thank you.